take a look at what happened. Get down, get down, get down. A shocking scene in Pennsylvania earlier this evening where a gunman shot into a rally where former President Donald Trump was speaking. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee was hurt in an apparent assassination attempt. A rally attendee is also dead tonight. Another is hurt and Secret Service says they killed the gunman. Thank you for joining us as we continue to follow this breaking news. I'm Sarah Rakowitz. We are now hearing from former President Trump, who shared a statement on Truth Social a few hours after the shooting. He says in part, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. He says most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person who was badly injured. CBS reporters were at the scene where Trump was rushed away, bleeding from his ear. Lauren Linder is in Butler County, Pennsylvania, with the latest on what happened. Take a look at what happened. Secret Service agents rushed former President Donald Trump off stage after shots were fired, moments after he began speaking at a Saturday evening rally in Butler County, Pennsylvania. The Secret Service says a man attending the rally was killed. A doctor standing nearby tried to help him performing CPR. The guy had spun around, was jammed between the benches. He had a headshot here. Trump raised his fist as he left the stage. On his Truth Social site, the former president said he was shot by a bullet that pierced the upper part of his right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin, he wrote. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. I just hear these four shots and everybody screaming drop and you can see the blood like splatter on his face and the Secret Service just barricades him. The Secret Service says the gunman was outside the cordoned off area of the rally, standing on an elevated structure, and that he was shot and killed by a member of the agency's counter assault team. A large number of Secret Service agents is in Milwaukee right now ahead of the convention. They're trying to piece together what happened here in Butler. President Biden spoke a couple hours after the shooting. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. This was Trump's last rally ahead of next week's Republican convention in Milwaukee. He was taken away in a motorcade and again held up his fist as he got into his SUV. Lauren Linder, CBS News, Butler County, Pennsylvania. And we're also learning tonight that President Biden has spoken with Donald Trump as we hear from Arkansas officials and lawmakers following that assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Trump's former White House press secretary saying, quote, President Trump won't be stopped. America can't be broken. Pray for our country. Arkansas's U.S. Senator Tom Cotton asking for prayers for President Trump, his agents and all of his supporters at the rally in Butler. And here's U.S. Representative French Hill saying prayers for former President Donald Trump and thanks to our Secret Service and for his health care providers. And former governor and GOP presidential candidate Asa Hutchinson also sharing his reaction, saying, quote, the assassination attempt on former President Trump is an attack on democracy. My prayers are with President Trump and others impacted. I am grateful for all the first responders investigating this act of terror. This is, of course, a constantly developing story, so you're going to want to stay here with us at THV11 and THV11.com for the very eight latest on air and online. Well, here is a quick update of what uh, you can expect for the rest of the weekend. Tomorrow, a heat advisory has been issued for a few counties here in central Arkansas and the Arkansas River Valley. Heat index values tomorrow afternoon between 105 degrees and 110. And I think at the very peak here in the Little Rock area will be around 105. So tomorrow, beginning around noontime through about 6 o'clock, that'll be the hottest part of the day. Those are your heat index temperatures. Here are the actual high temperatures tomorrow. Look for highs in the lower 90s north to the middle to even upper 90s through central and southern Arkansas. It gets a little hotter, but we've got some relief in the form of some rain and some slightly cooler temperatures on the way toward the end of the week. We'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes. Sarah. 
All right, Tom, thank you. Right now, a man is in custody after allegedly fatally shooting his father just outside Conway yesterday. That's according to the Faulkner County Sheriff's Office. According to authorities, Jack Rupel Jr. has been charged with capital murder and second degree domestic battery after killing Jack Rupel Sr. near Sadler Road. We'll keep you updated as soon as we get more information. Earlier this week, Secretary of State John Thurston rejected an amendment aimed at putting abortion access in Arkansas to a vote. Thurston claims organizers failed to submit all the required paperwork alongside the one over 100,000 signatures. THV 11's Carter Thweet was at the Capitol speaking to protesters today. Carter, what did you hear? Sarah, it's basically turned into a he said, she said situation. On Thursday, Arkansans for Limited Government, which is the group behind the amendment, released a letter saying they did submit the proper paperwork to the Secretary of State's office, even claiming they did so multiple times. On Saturday, protesters gathered to make this claim once again. Saturday afternoon, pro-choice protesters of all ages gathered in front of the state capitol to say that they believe the Secretary of State's office did not give their amendment a fair chance. They repeated the claim that they submitted everything they needed to and claims otherwise are false. To say that they were going to throw it out is inexcusable. Uh, it's not justifiable in my mind. Um, it shouldn't be, so we are in the task of fighting them. So it's, in my mind, rather bogus. Some of those in attendance also gave speeches about what the amendment means to them and why they believe the signatures collected for it should be counted. A few counter protesters also attended, standing silently off to the side. Jerry Cox with the Family Council Action Committee is among those who does not support the amendment, but says he wasn't there partially because he sees the protest as unnecessary. The chants about counting signatures and so forth really are missing the point because if you do not follow the law when you submit your signatures, then they're not going to be counted. However, in the protesters' view, they did follow the law. But the Secretary of State's office doesn't think so, and if they don't change their tune, pro-choice advocates may be running out of alternatives. Legally, I don't know what we're going to do except for we'll uh, do it up again two years from now to get it on the next ballot. The Secretary of State's office did recently reaffirm the letter it originally sent on July 10th, saying that the sponsors of the amendment failed to comply with all the requirements. For more on that, as well as the sponsor's full statement pushing back, you can visit our website, THV11.com. Sarah, back to you. So my philosophy has always been love yourself, no matter what you look like, no matter what you weigh, no matter what you drive, no matter how much money you make. Watch your portions, because there's something good in all the portions, and you got to move. That was Richard Simmons, the major 1980s workout personality who was defined by his uplifting spirit, as you saw. Tonight, according to multiple reports, we know he has died. Simmons was most known for those aerobic exercise videos, and he had celebrated his 76th birthday earlier this week.